Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, hopefully I'm catching a few new or uh, people looking to get into Flames of War. Um, and all the people who already subscribed and watch my channel regularly, if you know any people like that, uh, then send this video their way because basically this is going to be looking at the Katarine starter set, um, what models are there, their statistics, and doing a little battle report with it. And while we're doing the battle report, go into the main rules of the game and hopefully uh, enlightening some people and um, potentially uh, creating some new players uh, for our hobby. Uh, so back to new people. Um, Flames of War is a World War II um, tabletop game and it's really fun. It's uh, fairly easy to play and is quite user friendly uh, with unit cards which you get in the starter set. Uh, now there are two um, basically versus starter sets. We have the Kasserine, which is American and German, and we have Tobruk, which is British and Italian. So this one is going to focus on this one, uh, Kasserine, and then next week there'll be a Tobruk mission. And that's basically going to be it. I'm going to try and guide you through uh, what rules crop up in a battle report, and you'll be able to see what you can assemble from the starter set. So hopefully this will be helpful. And for uh, existing uh, players, you just might be interested to see who will win in this starter set. And it is a bit of a surprise how long, uh, I was uh, much more, more turns uh, the game lasted for than I expected it to. And that's it, basically. So we'll have a little look at what you can assemble from this box set. Okay, so this is what you can put together from the German section of the Kasserine box. Uh, it is a Panzer III company. So uh, in the company we have a Panzer III HQ, uh, for this one I'll be using a long 5cm variant of the Panzer III and then we have a platoon of 5 Panzer III's and there's various different loadouts you can do but this is what I've done. I've got this guy here, the unit leader, as an up-armoured uh, Panzer III I then have a long 5cm two regular short 5cm Panzer III's and a 7.5cm Panzer III. And then we also have in formation a Panzer IV platoon. So the Panzer IV platoon is equipped as two regular Panzer IVs and a long barreled. And that is it. It's just the three units in your formation. Uh, for the mission we're going to be playing, the formation is going to be what is going to win you the game or lose you the game. We do have a support unit. We have three 5cm anti-tank guns. And that is it from the German uh, contingent. We'll have a little look at stats and then we'll go and have a look at the American stuff. So I mentioned formations and support. So basically your formation is a Panzer three tank company. <clears throat> There are various other formations that the Germans can field, uh, but this is what you can do from your starter box. So, this building is covered in the rule book. Um, so I'd flick through that if you're unfamiliar with it and have a little look. So basically, um, to field a formation, you have to basically uh, use the black boxes that you can see in front of you. The grey ones are optional, and sometimes black boxes have several options that you can use. So in this case, our black box is ticked with the HQ with our tank. Then we have a Panzer III platoon and a Panzer IV platoon. And as you can see, you can add a bit more to the formation when you have more models. But I find with the Germans in mid-war, uh, more support options might be a better option since German tanks can be expensive points-wise for the game. Okay, so this is a unit card. Um, you will get this in the box. Um, so basically it has all the stats. Um, weapon statistics, movement statistics, stati um, morale, everything you need for the model. And on the back there's points values for the units as well. Um, so the Panzer III, um, if we look at the, the left, it's confident on a 4 plus, so motivations are 50-50. Although it has got a good last stand and remount uh, already built in on a 3 plus. Um, its skill rating is 3, so this is good for um, your additional uh, movement orders or if you're in combat, you'll be hitting your unit on a three. Now on the right, uh, it is hit on four, a careful. So when your opponent is hitting you, he's hitting you on fours. And then you can see your armor stats. Now front armor five is pretty decent for mid wall. And then below that, you can see all your movement. So tactical is when you move and you can shoot and dash is uh, going a bit faster in various terrain um, or no terrain at all. 
um, but you can't fire. And then you got a cross check is uh, what you need to go over difficult terrain. Um, the Panzer 3 HQ has got a long 5 centimeter, so decent range, 28 inches, anti-tank 9, so pretty good, but 4 plus firepower does let it down a bit. Additional thing to note with the Germans, they have a Stormtrooper rule, which means they can do two movement orders uh, a turn, providing they pass the first one. So pretty decent, you can duck in and out of cover using the Blitz move and shoot and scoot, um, but we'll go through them uh, when we do the battle report. So let's have a look at what the Panzer III platoon uh, is uh, using. Okay, so this is the Panzer III platoon. So one of them uh, is going to be an up-armoured uh, Panzer III. So the front armour rating changes to a 6. Uh, and it will have a long barreled 5 centimeter. Um, there's a few short 5 centimeters, So uh, not as good as the long barrel, shorter range. And the anti-tank goes down to 8. Uh, there's one uh, tank in the platoon that is equipped with a 7.5cm uh, gun, so the short range is anti-tank 9, the firepower is good on the 3+, plus. but as you can see in the notes it has what is called heat. Um, now in this game, if you're at long range, uh, so that's basically anything over 16 inches, your armour is increased by 1. Now with heat rounds, this ignores that rule, so whatever you hit, the front armour stays the same and does not go up. So, pretty decent. Um, I've not mentioned the stats because they're exactly the same as the HQ and in fact the Panzer IVs are going to be the same as well. The only difference will be um, some of their weapon stats and movement stats. So that is it, that is the Panzer III platoon. And here's the Panzer IV platoon, as again you can see the stats are the same. Now the movement, uh, the terrain uh, is a bit quicker. Um, so basically the platoon is equipped with two short 7.5 centimeter guns and you can see there's two um, lines for this so you've got direct fire which is uh, anti-tank 7, 3 plus and can fire a smoke round so instead of trying to kill your uh, opponent you can put a bit of smoke in their face to make it harder for them to hit you but the interesting thing you can see is artillery now instead of firing your regular shot, you can basically put a template weapon down instead. Um, so not going to be amazing against um, the American, uh, what the Americans can feel from this set. But if you are fighting against infantry or uh, guns, um, it would be quite useful. Uh, also as well, you have the Panzer IV Long, um, which is the heaviest gun the Germans will be using today. Anti-tank 10, 32 inch range, 3 plus. I never really noticed as well, there's a machine gun rating on your card. So basically in the game you can fire your main gun or all your MGs. Won't be using the MGs this game against the Americans because they've got all tank units. Uh, but this is really good as artillery um, is used basically against infantry and gun units. Um, but the problem is, is if you do hit them and they fail their save, it is a 6 plus firepower. So it doesn't always... Um, give you um, what you want if your enemy is in good cover but in the open you can mow stuff down. Okay and this will be the only gun unit that will be appearing in the game today and as a five centimeter tank and a platoon. Um, so basically um, same stats again but they don't have a remount because they don't remount and instead of armor they have a basic save so whatever hits them on a three plus they pass it and um, if they're in bulletproof cover, which they'll start in the game, or hit from the front because they're gun shield, uh, your opponent will have to pass a firepower to kill them. So 5cm gun, 28 inch range, anti-tank 9, 4 plus firepower. So basically same as a long barrel 5cm on the Panzer trees. Only different rule is it is forward firing, so basically it can only target things in front of it. Um, to, to have a clear idea of what that means, look in the shooting section in the main rule book and they got some clear diagrams to help you out with that. So that is it. Okay, so now we'll have a look at the stats. Shall we discuss what is good and what is bad of the Midwar Africa Corps? Now good, stats, basically threes, motivation four and careful hit on four as well. The equipment is good, um, front armor five can be increased to six in some cases and overall the weapons are pretty good anti-tank 9 or 8, firepower not so good on a 4+, plus, uh, but again you've got plenty of options to upgrade your stuff. Um, downside, biggest downside is the cost per unit, very expensive, um, 
in a standard, say, 100-point game, you're not going to have many tanks. Um, a lot of people tend to take them just as support units, um, or you'll have a lot of support units backing up your tanks. Um, and that is well, I kind of find as a downside. Um, the infantry ain't overly great, um, just in terms of numbers of um, models in the unit, but that you'll discover that later. We'll just focus on what's in their um, box for this game. So, now we've seen Africa Core, let's have a look at what the Americans are using. Okay, so this is the American contingent from the Catherine box. It is an M3 Lee company, uh, that is the all formation. Uh, so, let's have a look at it. So, in the formation we have uh, one M3 Lee as your HQ, and it has been upgraded to a long barrel, and we'll have a look at the stats uh, for that in a sec. Uh, we then have a platoon of three uh, M3 Lees, and one of them is upgraded to a long barrel. Uh, just given like the different loadout options, I know the points are going to be quite different, um, but this is just a starter set showing people what to do. And then we have uh, so three M4 Shermans, and that is it for the formation. Uh, and at the back we have uh, five Stuarts. Now these are actually um, the M5 Stuarts, which are the late war later war variants, but it uh, they'll do. Uh, but you'll see the picture of the M3 Stuart on the card, and they look a little bit different, um, but uh, we won't mix them up at all. And that's it, so we'll have a little look at the formation breakdown and the statistics. Okay, so this is an M3 Lee tank company. So like the Panzer III, we're taking three boxes with this. So a Lee for the HQ, a platoon of Lees, and then you've got a drop-down option. So we could put Stuarts in here, but we're not going to do that, because they're not that great. And the Shermans are really going to anchor this formation. And you can see here, you can add another Lee formation when the model's are available. And the thing I like about the Americans, you can have a little, it's pretty sick, you can have support units in your formation. So you can have a unit of mortars, a unit of assault guns, which is another artillery unit, and some scouts. Now scouts in this game are pretty fun because they allow you to extend beyond your deployment zone in most cases. And um, they're really hard to hit and can be quite annoying but we're focusing on what is in the box today and uh, which is case is the Lees, the Shermans and the Stuarts. Okay so now we have the unit card for the M3 Lee. Now looking at the stats there's a bit of a stark difference between uh, what the Germans uh, have and now it's just to reflect that this is the first combat um, that the Americans are having of the war where we the Germans have been fighting since 39. But the Americans are confident, they're 4 plus, so pretty good. Their skill though, however, is green, as you expect, they've not fought before. Um, so there you go. So that will uh, not help you in combat um, or doing skill checks. They're also hit on 3 pluses, which because they're aggressive. So that means the Germans will be hitting the Americans a lot easier than the Americans will be hitting the Germans. The front armour of a 5 is pretty good though mid-war, they should be able to bounce quite a lot of the hits. Movement is pretty standard, although the 4 plus cross check is a little worse for wear compared to the Panzers. Now, different thing with the um, Lee, it can be equipped with a long or short barrel. Uh, the long barrel is quite nice, gives you a little bit more range, anti-tank 10 and a 3 plus. And as you've noticed uh, with the other cards, you have a halted and moving rate of fire. Now for the Americans, you might be wondering, it's the same. It's because of the stabilizer rule. Now basically, the Americans keep their full rate of fire while moving, but it will incur a plus one penalty to hit. And that is it. They can also fire smoke, and you can see forward firing rule. Another interesting feature on Lee is it also has a little turret on the top, 37mm. Uh, now, it's anti-tank 7 and a 4 plus firepower, but you'd be surprised how many games have been won off the back of this little plucky turret on the top of the tank, um, and it's, it's quite interesting. It does have a secondary weapon rule, meaning it'll require plus 1 to hit compared to what you normally required on the main weapons. Um, and then you also have your machine guns, which we might need to use against the anti-tank guns, but that is it. Okay, and now we have the M4 Sherman. Same statistics as the M3 Lee in terms of motivation and what it's hit on. Its front armour is 6 though, so it's pretty beefy for mid-war. And then we have its main armament of uh, the 75mm gun, which is 80-10, and has 5+. plus. It also has, uh, as well as its MGs, it has a 50 cal, 
so it can be fired at the same time as the MGs, and it has a um, decent anti-tank rating of 4, so good against light vehicles and um, dug in weapons and infantry, but it has a 5 plus firepower, so it's a little bit better, better than a 6. You're surprised how much a 50 cal can dig out some stuff if you needed to, and that's it. And again, stabilizer rule, um, quite handy, um, so it keeps your uh, models moving. Here we have the M3 Stuart, so statistics uh, with motivation and skill the same, but it's reckless, hit on the 2, so it's not going to be overly difficult for the Germans to hit it, and with a front armour of a 3, not overly difficult to kill it either. So these things are going to be buzzing around like mosquitoes, flies probably drop in about the same rate as well, but um, speed-wise they're quite fast, so they can be quite uh, irritating uh, to your opponent, um, they have anti-tank of 7, so they're not really going to be doing too much damage to the front of your Panzer threes. Uh, but going around the flanks, they should be able to cause some damage or take out anti-tank guns. But their 4 plus firepower will um, hinder that. They still have the stabilizers, so there's a unit of 10, so they'll be having 10 shots unless they start uh, losing tanks. And again, MGs, a lot of MGs, so... Um, yeah, you'll have a lot of MGs to fire at stuff. Not in this, not much in this case, unless it's anti-tank guns. But again, it's firepower six. Okay, so this is probably what I think is good and bad of the fighting first. Uh, so basically, for what you get, the points are quite cheap, quite affordable. Um, so and the equipment is really good, really good. Um, the Shermans and these. Decent armor, good guns, especially if you upgrade them. And the Stuarts are good in their own way. They're a very distracting unit, and they don't cost much. You have to deal with them, uh, and while you're dealing with them, you're not aiming at the bigger threats. Um, the motivation on a four is okay. It's pretty decent. But what they fall down on, of course, is their skill rating um, on a five. It's not really going to help you out with um, movement orders, and if you do out, end up going to combat, um, it's not going to be great. Your armour should help you though. The other thing is, is being hit on the 3, 2 in the case of the Stuarts. Being easier to hit on your opponent could tilt the scales against you, but if you use your force quite good, it's quite you can hit hard with this force, and you should be able to take a bit of punishment, so even if you are being hit quite a lot, you should be able to shrug the damage, and hopefully that will show in this battle report. So let's have a little look at how I've set up a table for today. Okay, so here we have a table set up to do a little showcase for the starter set. So trying to do as uh, desdy as possible. Um, so we'll go over some of the terrain features that we have. So you can see we've got some dunes. Now these are going to be tall terrain. So the way these work, if anything's behind it, it will block line of sight so you can't see them. Uh, if you're on top, uh, you can uh, see units and you can also benefit for being in cover as well, being on the top. Uh, and this position is known as Hell Down. Uh, we also have some palm groves. Uh, this again is tall terrain. Uh, it'll also be difficult terrain, which means you need to do a cross check to get into it. Uh, so basically, if you're more than uh, two inches in, you uh, can't be seen. But then if you're near the edge, you can see out and shoot. Uh, we have some little walls here that will be short terrain and you'll need a cross check if you were to go over it. Uh, we have some uh, scrub, which are the dark bases here. Uh, that's going to be short terrain but there's going to be no difficulty going over it. Um, the buildings and the walls here, they're all going to be tall terrain so some areas are going to be blocking uh, line of sight. And that is it, so everything else is open and is going to be kill zone. So uh, the mission is going to be Annihilation. Uh, basically this is the most straightforward mission you can have, is straight up, just go and kill each other. And it would be a good starting point to practice what your units can do with this mission. And then go from there. So we will uh, set up the deployment zones and we will have a look at how everything deploys. Okay, so we need a mission, and I've gone for Annihilation today. So it's a pretty straightforward mission. What you're going to be doing is uh, to win, is to destroy your enemy force. Now to do that, you just need to take out the formation. So for new players, 
I, I would say play this one because you should be able to get a couple of games done very quickly since the formations are quite small so you'll be able to get a feel for your units um, you maybe you can swap your armies around so you can see from the other perspective um, you can have games with objectives but I'll do that in the Tobruk um, uh, battle report um, I play this for now um, if you're new to the game because it, it's fun, it's quick, and it should, as I said, give you a feel for the game. Um, and that's it, so you, you'll see here, um, everything is described for you, setting up, deployment, who goes first and winning the game, and then there's another slide here which will have a breakdown of special, special rules if you need them. Uh, with uh, the additional rules, I won't worry about victory points in, the, in your first few games, just play and have fun and get to learn the rules. Okay, so as per the mission requirements, the, I've set up dice uh, 12 inches from the table edge uh, either side, and that will be deployment zones for both players. Um, you can use whatever you want to mark out deployment zones, you can just measure it out, uh, but I use dice personally. So, first thing we need to do though is determine who the attacker is going to be in this mission, and basically it's the highest roll. So, I'll roll a die for the Americans and a die for the Africa Corps. And it'll be the Africa Corps. So basically they get first choice of deployment zone and they will be dropping the first unit down. So we'll uh, have a little look at deployment. Okay, so everything's deployed and we'll have a little chat of how everything went down. So first of all, the five centimeter guns went down on the ridge. Um, why? Because being on tall terrain, uh, tall terrain basically cancels out short terrain. So. This is a command and view. They haven't got, quite got the range, uh, but anything coming into here is going to be in a decent kill zone. Uh, the Americans replied by putting their Stuarts in uh, cover over here, uh, so ideally staying away from this area. Uh, the Germans then put the Panzer IVs uh, behind the hill so they can't be seen, but they'll be able to do a blitz move, which we'll go to into when we do movement uh, onto the ridge, and again, tall terrain. Uh, the Americans then put the Shermans over here hidden uh, behind the dunes, uh, so uh, nothing can see them yet. Uh, Germans countered that with putting their platoon in the scrub here, so they're concealed, uh, so they're in cover. Uh, the Lees came down then, so directly in front of them, uh, they won't be able to be seen by the bulk of the Panzer III platoon. Um, so that'll be okay, and they'll probably be out of range of the guns. And then the Panzer III HQ went over here with the Panzer IVs, and then Lee HQ went behind the remainder of the Lees to give them motivation, which we will uh, go into when we get into the game. So, that is it. So first of all, we need to roll to see who is going to be going first. So again, roll both dice. And the Americans will be going first on the six, so which is not necessarily great, which we'll go into when we start turn one. Okay, so American turn one. So normally you will have a startup step where you do your morales and whatnot, but being first turn, nothing's happened, so we're straight to go into the movement. Now the problem with a meeting engagement and going first is all your units are already treated as moving. So you'll be using your moving rate of fire. For the Americans, it's gonna be the same. So being the Americans going first and meeting engagement's okay, because you might as well just keep on moving because you're not gonna suffer any uh, additional penalties. The only other problem you have is you'll not be able to fire artillery bombardments, but Again, not a problem because we have no artillery, so we are going straight into movement. Okay, so movement step. Basically, Shermans, we're going to start moving them first, and we're going to move them up onto the ridge. We're going to want to fire with them, so we'll just be using their tactical movement, which is 10 inches, which is more than enough. So if we just move them up here, so they're just behind the ridge, so they will have concealment for anything firing at them. But they will be able to fire onto the Germans down here. So they should have range 28 inches from their guns, which you will check, which is decent enough. The Lees then are going to do a tactical move, and they can move 10 inches, so that is up to this die here. So if we slowly move them over, and we're going to move them like this, and leave a little gap behind, so 
we can move the HQ behind and it can fire through the gap at the Panzer threes. So 10 inches should be enough to get him behind. It does bring him in range of the uh, 5 centimeters, but this here is the end of short range. So long range their armor will go up by 1, so it will be easy to hit, but their armor should protect them, hopefully. Stuarts are going to be doing a cross-country dash. Now, dashing uh, enables you to go faster, but you do sacrifice your ability to shoot as a result. But these guys are not really going to get into a position to shoot anything this turn, so they're just going to be dashing around here on a little flanking move. So this dice is where these three can end up, so they will go. And when they finish their move, they can rotate any direction they want. So we're going to put front armor face in, just in case the Germans get any lucky shots. And then we're going to do this and this. So one of them will be in the open a bit. Still in the movement phase, we're going to do our first movement order, and that is going to be a follow me with the steward. So basically, I'm going to move the unit leader four inches. So he's going to go and end up by here. So let's check him back so he can actually fit. And basically, they need to pass a motivation on a four plus, and if they do, everyone else gets to move four inches. So let's see if they can do it. Uh, they do not, so this guy will probably get pummeled by something, but it's another thing for the Germans to shoot at. In which case, we're going into shooting. Okay, for the shooting, we're going to start off firing the M3 Lee HQ, who has got a long barrel gun, and he's got his uh, top gun as well, the little 37mm gun, which can fire as well. And he's going to be targeting the Panzer Streets in front of him. Now, he's got 28 inches on a long barrel, which is more than enough. Uh, you can only target these two because of the gap. Now with this game, as long as the tape measure can fit between your two units, you can fire through. So the long barrel gun is in range and the 37mm has a 24 inch range. So we'll check that now as well and that is in as well. So because it stabilizes, he still has two shots. Uh, so normally the Panzer IV is a hit on fours. Um, it's going to be 5 for range, 6 for concealment, 7 because they got on the ground, and 8 because of stabilizers. So this is need 6s sixes by 6s. Sixes. So first go, no. And then it's also going to be an 8 for the turret because it's a secondary weapon, which adds plus 1. Uh, we get a 1. So it's uh, down to the platoon in front and hopefully they can get some hits otherwise uh, they're gonna get in trouble so first of all let's check to see if it's short range ooh it might be short range here it is short range just 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 so we'll roll all six dice at the same time so it's going to be sevens this time because it's going to be four normally five concealment, six on the ground, and seven for stabilizers. So this is the um, main guns. So sixes by fives. We have two potentials here. And this converts into none. And then we've also got the, um, ter the three turrets, which again is going to be sevens. None. So the Lees could be in a bit of trouble next turn. Not to fear though, because the Shermans are in range on the Panzer threes, and they are on tall terrain, so it will cancel out the concealment, but they will still be long range. So they again, these guys have stabilizers, so that will be six dice, two each, and it's fours normally to hit, and it's going to be fives for range, and then sixes for stabilizers, so see if they can get it. And they get three. So these hits get allocated, so we'll just check to see what actually is in range. And that is basically all but the up armoured one, which is good. So we're going to be putting it on a long barrel, a 7.5, and then a Panzer three. So the German player can, so we'll move you over so we can see, the German player can swap the hits off some of his tanks so ideally he probably would like to keep a long barreled five centimeter so the, 
he is going to try and swap it onto a short one. And he gets a 6. So it will need a 3 to do it. And he got a 6. So that is fine. But he might have wasted that for the armour save. So the front armour of a Panzer III is 5. This will go to 6 for the range. So the AT on the uh, Sherman is 10. So uh, the player will need a 4 to equal but a 5 to completely bounce it. So we've got the 7.5 gets a 4, so that's an equal. And then the two 5 cent short 5s, uh, one bounce, one penetrate and hit. So we've got one of everything there. So first of all, let's see now if the American player can convert any hits. So we'll try the bail first. So on a 3 up, the Panzer 3 is bailed. And we get a 4, so that's a bail. And then we have the penetrate and hit. And on a 3, we have a kill and anything else, so less than 3, it's just going to be another bail. And we get a, oh, it's just two bail Panzer 3s, unfortunately, and that sums up the American turn. Okay, so going into German turn 1, we do have some motivation to do. So in the starting step, number 1 is to remount bailed out tanks. Now Panzer 3s are confident, but they have a 3 plus remount, which is pretty nice. So basically, let's see if we can get them back in. Uh, so, we have the 7.5 here on a 3 up. He does not get back in. And then the short 5 centimeter. He does not get back in. Not good dice for the Germans. So the next part then would be to rally pin down units. Now they are none. Um, we need to check unit last stand. Now... If there were only two active tanks, so either not dead or bailed out, these would then have to do a last stand. Luckily, at the moment, they do not. But the Germans do have a 3 up uh, last stand called uh, Special Rule, as we've looked at, Third Reich, which at the moment, they probably would fail. So we are going into German movement. Okay, so in the movement phase, these guys are in short terrain. Now, basically, the two shorties are more than two inches from the edge, so that means when they fire out, there will be concealment. So we're not going to move them because we want to benefit from our full rate of fire, because if we can get rid of these Lees and these Shermans, that's going to be a uh, short order, and that's going to be done. Uh, on the other side of things, we are going to be trying to do some blitz moves, maybe, or we might do some tactical moves to get around and maybe pick off a couple of Stuarts. Or we could just do uh, blitz moves um, with the HQ. So a blitz move enables you to move four inches in any direction and it doesn't count as you move in. So we're going to try that with the HQ. Now, luckily, the Germans are veterans, so it's going to be a three, which it does. So four inches was more than enough to get him onto the ridge. So you can fire his full rate of fire there, and we will go and move the Panzer Fours. Okay, so continuing movement, the Panzer Fours are going to be doing a tactical move. So tactical ten inches, so they're going to go over to here and to here, and then the long barrel is going to go this side to just try and help out with the Panzer 3s to uh, see if I can, you know, if you never know, I might not be able to hit the Lees. So um, he's just there for added support. And I need to keep him within six inches of the unit leader, otherwise he has a penalty to his shooting, so it'll be plus one harder to hit the Americans. So, talking about hitting, let's see if I can hit any of them in German shooting. Okay, so we're going to start off firing the Panzer 3s in the short terrain and we're going to start with the 5cm gun, so he has two shots, there is going to be concealment, it is long range as well, so normally a lead is hit on a 3, going to a 4 for terrain and then 5 for range, so this is the short 5cm and we have one hit, so that's going to be nice, so we'll assign that to here. We then have the two long barrels, so I know one is up armoured but it's the same stats. So these are actually on the edge of the terrain, uh, so it's still long range but it's going to be forced to hit instead. And we only get one, so it is like that. Um, there's no point in the American player reassigning hits because they're all the same and luckily the long barrel uh, hasn't been hit because uh, that's how I assigned them and I didn't really notice until this point. So. We have some armor saves to do. So 
The front armor on the Lee is a 5, which will be 6 at this range. Now the short barreled uh, 5 centimeter is 88, so a 2 will equal, and we get a 6. So that is a bounce by here. And then the long barrel is 89, so we'll need a 3 to equal. And we get a 1, so that is a penetrating hit. Now the firepower for the long 5 centimeter isn't great, it's a 4 plus, but let's see if we can convert to a kill. And we do, we get a kill, that's our first kill of the game, and we will see what other units can achieve. Okay, so I'm using a bit of cotton wool to show the destroy tank. Next up, the 5cm guns on the hill are going to fire at the same unit of Lee's. So it's still going to be long range, so it's just going to be forced hit. But there is going to be 6 dice, because there are 3 of them with 2 shots each. So, needing 4s to hit. And we only get 2, but there's only 2 there, so that might be enough. Again, it's only 89. Front armor on the Lee is 6, so it will need 3 to equal. It's 6 at this range, normally it's 5. So the one to the right gets a 4, so it completely bounces it. And then the one next to it, well, we've got another pen here on a 2. So the German player needs to convert this firepower to kill it, otherwise it will just stay bailed. And it's a 4 firepower which we fail, so it's just going to be a bailed lee. So I'll put a token on it to notify. Okay, and now it's up to the long range shot from the Panzer IV. So we only have one dice because he's on the move. And then the other two Panzer IVs and the Panzer III will go for the Stuarts. So we need a four here. And we get a two, so not enough, unfortunately. Okay, so only the one Stuart I can actually see, and unfortunately for it, one of the Panzer IVs is actually short range. So I'll roll for him first, because he'll only need a 2 at this range, and he gets a 3, and then the other one will need a 3 because of long range, which we get 2 hits on it, unfortunately. And the front armour of a Stuart is only a 3, so... The short barreled uh, Panzer IV is 87, so a 7 will go into a 4, so that is a penetrating hit. And then we've got the long barreled, uh, so this is the long range, sorry, so this is now effectively front armor 4, and that gives us a 6, 7, so that's an equal. So to convert now we have a potential bail and a potential kill. So the potential kill results in a he is dead. So that leaves the Panzer III on the hill with nothing to shoot at. So that will wrap up the German turn one. Okay, American turn two. So turn one didn't really give us much gains and then we took a bit of a pound in. So we need two try and get this tank back in. Now luckily the motivation is actually quite decent so on a 4 plus he will get back in and luckily his HQ is right behind him so he will get a re-roll thanks to this. So on a 4 plus he gets back in and a 2 is not good enough but get a re-roll thank you HQ he's shouting at him trying to get him back in and we get a 4 so he is back in the fight. So, luckily he getting back in, this unit no longer needs to do a last stand check and these guys haven't taken enough casualties to do one and the Sherman's okay as well, so we can go into the movement. Okay, so movement. The Sherman's going to remain still, they're a decent enough position on the hill uh, firing down on the Panzer 3s. The Lees are also going to remain stationary because they're going to shoot and then they're going to try and do a shoot and scoop the next uh, in the assault step and get out of the way and the Stuarts are the only ones who are really going to be doing any movement so they're going to be doing a tactical. Now luckily they got 12 inches to do this tactical and they're just going to go. They're rated as reckless and that is how we're going to play them. They're not a formation unit so these die it doesn't really matter. And there's enough shots there. You never know some of them might stick. They're already 87 but if I can bail them and they don't get back in that's a dead unit of Panzer IVs, so we are going into American shooting. 
Okay, we will start with the Shermans this time, firing onto this Panzer III platoon, so basically they can hit everyone apart from the up-armoured Panzer III here. So, they're on the ridge, so this cancels out this short terrain. It is long range, so the 4s goes to 5s, but that is it, because they haven't moved, so the stabilisers are not coming into effect. So, we need 5s to hit, and there's 3 with 2 shots each, so 6 shots total. So, needing 5, and we get 3. So we're going to assign it first onto the active tanks and then we'll put it on the 7.5 because he's going to be the most dangerous. So the German player can now try to reassign them. So first up is going to try and fob the one on the long barrel onto one of the bailed out ones, which he does not on the two and because he failed, that is it. Can't attempt anymore. So it's long range though on 80-10 and the front armour of these Panzer 3s will go up to 6 so we'll need a 4 to equal so on the long barrel we get a 5 so completely bounce thankfully onto the short 5 we get a 2 so that is a penetrating hit and that might be a problem and then the 7.5 we have a 5 another complete bounce so this guy here is basically automatically bailed because it was a penetrating hit and the American player needs a 3 plus to kill him. And we get a 3. So that is one dead Panzer 3 here. And it's a short 5. We're then going to take a little dive over to the Stuarts. And they're firing short range at the Panzer 4s. Now that long guy is within 6 inches. So they could assign a hit to him if they wanted to. But I'd rather go for the short one. So there's going to be 8 dice total here. Now normally it's going to be 4s, but because of stabilisers it's going to be 5s, but I get 8 dice. So let's see how many hits I can get. And I only get 1 unfortunately, so I'm going to be putting it uh, the closest guy here. And I don't think he's within 6 inches to swap it long range, no he's outside of 6. I will check, it can be 6 or 8. Okay, so he is going to try and reassign it to the long barreled um, Panzer IV just so he has a bit better armour rating. So on a 3 plus, he can swap it. And note, so it stays on this guy here. So it's going to be okay though, hopefully, famous last words, because it's front armour 5 and it's 87 on the Stuart. So basically, um, we will only need a 2 to equal. And we get a 4, so that's a complete bounce. So that's fine. So now it's up to the Lees to be able to do something. Okay, so the HQ again is going to have another pop at the Panzer III. So can only hit this one because he's the only one in his uh, line of sight vision. Oh no, that's not wrong. That's not right because there's a rack in front of him now, so you can fire through that. So he is going to be needing. Uh, it's going to be long range. So fours goes to fives, and concealment goes to sixes. So needing sixes on the main gun got a hit and then it's going to be a seven on the secondary turret no so the long barrel hit is going to be assigned on a long barreled five centimeter and the german player is going to try and fob it off onto the already bailed out panzer three which he does so this panzer three who's already not doing much is going to take a long barreled shot to the face which is 80 10 front armor goes to six at the range so a four to equal and we get a three so another penetrating hit so if the american player fails to convert this kill there's going to have to be a remount rolled because it's a double bail and it is a fail so the german player now needs to do a remount on a three up and if not the tank is destroyed luckily is a three is rolled so keeps in the fight for now so I was hoping, as the American, uh, rolling for the Americans, that I would be able to fob some shots off onto the Panzer IVs, but the Lees are going to have to go for the Panzer III's instead. And it's still long range, so it's going to be four shots needing sixes on the big guns. No hits, unfortunately. And then we have the two turrets needing sevens. And again, nothing. So... The Americans again found themselves out in the open against a lot of firepower so they're going to try and do a shoot and scoot which is a skill test so we need a five unfortunately because the Americans are green 
but if they pass it, they get to jump into the terrain by there. So let's see if the unit can do it first. So the platoon gets a 1, unfortunately, so that's not enough. And then the HQ gets a 3. So they're going to have to ride their luck next turn, and hopefully those Panzer 3s don't get back in in German turn 2. Okay, German turn, and again, all the focus is on the Panzer 3s again. So 3 uh, bailed out, the 7.5 and a short 5. So again, back in on 3, so basically the 7.5 first gets back in. And the short 5 also gets back in. So this might be the time where we finish off the Americans. Uh, there's going to be no movement from the Germans, everyone's in a fairly decent enough position. It's going to be all dependent on whether these guys can finish off the Lees. Um, but I think I'll start with the 5cm guns first uh, over here, raining down onto the Lees here. Okay, so the platoon of Lees are all in range. It is going to be long range, of course, so it's going to be hitting them on 4s. So 3s normally. Plus one for the range, so fours with six dice. And we got four hits, so that is two on each. Okay, so front armour of the Lee at this range is six, so they will need uh, threes to equal the 89. So the guy on the right bounces both hits nicely, four and a five, and then the other guy Oh, that's not bad at all. So a potential bail here. And we have a bail on a four. Okay, so then the Panzer fours will fire next. So the long barrel is going to go long range from uh, here to the Lee over here, he can just about see him. And then the shorts are going to go for the Stuart. So it's going to be again needing uh, fours for the range. And we get two hits on that fella, a four and a six. So this is actually a T10. Uh, so the range again is still going to be six, but it's going to be fours to equal this time for the American. So the Lee gets one bounce, but one pen. So he's already bailed because of the pen and firepower to kill. And we get a six. So that is another dead Lee. Okay, the remaining Panzer fours are going to go short range onto the Stuarts. So it's going to be twos. And we actually miss one. So that's going to be a hit on each of them. Apart from one, of course, and their front armour is three, so they're going to need fours to equal. So we'll go from top to bottom. So first one, pen. Next one, equal. And the other one's a pen. So we'll do the one who can be potentially just bailed. And he is bailed on a four. And then the two that can be killed. So the top one is just bailed and the other guy is just bailed. Just three bailed Stuarts here, unfortunately. Okay, next up, the Panzer threes are going to target the HQ. I need to check the line of sight to make sure they're all in, and they are. So all of them are going to be pumping their shots into the HQ, and hopefully if I can get him, and he doesn't fob any hits off, and this Lee runs away or dies, it's all good. So basically, first up, I need to check the range on the short die because they're only 24 inch range. Ah, that's more than enough. So first of all, uh, we're going to do the short barrel guy. So it, there is concealment though because of the um, racks in front of him. So it's going to be uh, threes normally, fours concealment, fives for range. No hits on the short. And then I got the 7.5, one hit. And then I got the two long barrels. So we get two more hits again. Okay, so the American player now with three hits on his HQ is going to try and swap 
some of the hits onto the unit in front of him, which he can do, but first of all he needs to be able to actually do it, so let's see if it's a possibility, and it's a 3, which it can, so uh, the player is going to put the 7.5 round, which is a heat round, and a long 5 onto this guy, and just take one of the long hits himself. So. Let's see if he can survive that initial hit first. So uh, front armor goes to six and it's 89, so a three will equal. And he bounces it on a six. Then the long range shot, a uh, long barrel shot on the other Lee. Again, same. Oh, that's a penetrating hit. But then we have a heat round, which I should have mentioned before in the lead up. The armor does not go up, so the armor stays at five. So needing a four to equal. And guess a two, so that's two penetrating hits there. So the firepower on the long barrel needs a four up, and I guess a four, so it kills. And does the, the 7.5 get it? Ah, guess him as well. So that is one deadly, but the HQ lives the fight on. Last thing to shoot for the Germans is the HQ with the long barrel five centimeter, so it's going to be two shots at range needing threes. And he's going for the Stuarts, trying to keep their heads down that a little bit more. So we get two hits. So they're going to be assigned on an active one and a bailed out one. So the Stuart commander is going to try and fob it off the active one, which he does not. So this is 89. The front armor goes to four for the range. So let's try the bailed out one first. And he gets a, it's going to be another penetrating hit. And the one who is still active is another penetrating hit, so all of them are bailed so far, so does the one, uh, do they die? So the bailed out one is not, and the other one is not, but the other one who got double bailed needs to do a remount straight up on a 4-up, but he survives, so they're just all bailed. Okay, somehow we've still got a turn three going for the Americans with a little bit of luck and some fobbing off. Uh, so basically this unit really taking a bullet for the HQ here. Uh, so in the motivation phase we have four bailed out Stuarts. Now we need to see if they can get back in. So from right to left we shall do it here. So needing a four plus because that is their motivation. First one, no. Second one, no. Third one, yes. Last one, no, so only one back in. So the problem now, we need a last stand test because there's only one active tank in the unit. So on a four plus, the unit stays. And they do. So we have the one active Stuart, and now we go into American movement. Okay, so only thing we're going to move for the Americans is the Lee, and this is pretty much what they should have done last turn. So basically, he is moving, it's 10 inches up to the corner, so he's going to move to the corner. So you can just see the Panzer IV and no one else really can see him so everything else is going to move and we'll just double check to see if the guns can't get him, I don't think they will otherwise we'll just have to angle his hull a little bit better. Okay, so having checked, uh, the guns are indeed out of range so he's going to be okay. So we're going into the American shooting and Lee is going to take a shot at the Panzer IV you can see uh, it is going to be long range, so it's going to be two shots needing sixes. So fours normally, fives for range, sixes because of stabilizers. And we get one hit, in, in fact. Uh, so that front armor on the Panzer IV goes to six for the range. So we'll need a four to equal against AT-10. Oh, and we have a penetrating hit here. So on a three up, he's dead. And he is dead, so there's a popped Panzer IV. Okay, so now the only active Stuart is going to fire at the Panzer IV. Uh, there's no need to fire the 37mm turret because that was the only target I could go for anyway. Um, so there we go. So the Stuart has two shots, short range, so hitting on fours with his little gun. And we get two hits, so that'll be one on each of the Panzer IVs because he is an eligible target. Um, so the long range shot is going to be a miracle if it does anything. So we'll do that one first. So the front armor on the Panzer IV will go to six. So a one will equal. And yes, a two. So just about on the bounce. And then we have the one on short range. Oh, and there we go. A penetrating hit with the Stuart. So on a four up, we get a kill. 
Oh, unfortunately, that's just a bail. Now, it really helped the Americans uh, in this game. So that's a bailed Panzer IV here. Okay, final for the Americans is going to be the Sherman. So we are going to, again, it's going to be long range, no concealment because the tall terrain cancels it out. Uh, so it's going to be six shots on fives. So let's see if they can convert any of these. And we have two hits, so we'll be putting it on the 7.5 and the long barreled five centimeters. So um, what we're going to try and do is the German player is we will try and fob it the 7.5 hit onto a short five. We can't fob it onto him because he's out of range, so he's not eligible. So on a three up, it does. So the short five gets hit again. So armor save. So this is front armor six. So on the long barrel, uh, it needs a four to equal. It bounces, and the short barrel is a penetrating hit. So on a three up. He's dead. And we have a killed Panzer III. Okay, so that's shooting done. So uh, we're now going to try and do a shoot and scoot with the Sherman. So it's going to be a five up. So, well, we've tried a few of these and none of them will work. So this one might, and it does. So four inches, and basically right about here is about the range on the five centimeters. So we're basically going to be bringing them down a little bit just so they can next turn help out going towards the right flank and helping the Stuarts. And, and that is going to be it. So we are going into German turn three. Okay, so motivation phase for the Germans, we have a bailed out tank. Luckily he is within six inches of his uh, formation commander, so he will benefit from a reroll. So it needs a three up to get back in for protected ammo. And we get a five, so no problems there. And now we go into German movement. Okay, German movement. First up, we're going to move the Panzer fours up onto the ridge. So they can, oh, we'll just put them on this side. There's enough room I've checked. And this one is going to go back here, just so they can benefit from the high ground and there's a lee uh, lurking around. Panzer III's uh, going to try and take on the Sherman. So we have the 7.5 can move to here, the long 5 can move to here, and then the up armoured can go to here. And that's it. So now we can go into shooting. Okay, we're going to open the shooting with the HQ firing at the Stuarts. So two dice needing threes because of range. And we get two hits, so we're going to put one on the active tank and one on the bailed. Uh, so the American player is first going to try and uh, fob it off, which he does. So he's going to be putting it on another bailed out tank. So first up, uh, armor saves, so a four. Uh, front armor 4 because uh, the range uh, against 89 so first one is a pen and second one is a pen so needing fours to convert here for the Germans so on the left dead on the right dead so two dead Stuarts courtesy of the HQ okay next up the Panzer fours are going to try and take on the Stuarts so it is long range again so the long barrel needs a four to hit and he misses and the short barrel needs a four to hit and he hits so this is only anti-tank um, 7, uh, so there's most likely this Stuart should be able to bounce it. So I'm putting it on the active tank, and then we're going to see if we can fob it off, uh, which he does. So that bail tank is hit again. So it's going to be front armor 4 against 7, so only needing a 3 to equal. And that's a penetrating hit, so firepower is a fail, but then we need a remount check on a 4 up which is a fail, so that is a dead Stuart by here. Okay, the Panzer III are now going to take on the Shermans. The 7.5 is actually short range, uh, so you'll be hitting on threes, and the other two will be on fours. So the 7.5 first on a three, and we get a hit, and then the two longs uh, need in fours, and we get two more hits, so that's a hit apiece. Uh, it doesn't really matter about fobbing off onto longer range hits, because uh, the 7.5 has heat. Uh, so they're all 89, uh, so we'll do the 7.5, uh, the long fives first. Um, so front armor on a Sherman is 6, so it goes to 7, so it only needs 2s to equal. 
and we get two bounce and then we have 89 um, from the 7.5 uh, so it's short range but it's got heat rounds anyway so we need a 3 to equal oh and we have a penetrate and hit and good firepower on the 7.5 so we'll only need a 3 up and that's a fail so we only have a bailed out Sherman okay so we're into turn 4 we just thought that for a dice game. So basically we have a remount on the Sherman here and it's going to be a 4 plus to get this fella back in and we get a 5 so he's back in. Now the Stuarts are down to one active tank so again they need a last stand but they will be getting a re-roll thanks to their commander this time. So first attempt, that's a fail so they have a second attempt and that's another fail. So the Stuart tank will be driving back home. So we go in into the movement phase. Okay, American movement. Now these Shermans are at long range, so they will be requiring fives to hit their uh, Panzer Falls in front of them. So we're going to drive into short range and still hit them on fives because we have stabilizers, but we're going to be short range. Now measured it out, and they just have enough move to get to the wrecks using a tactical move which is all they really need and it'll put them in some cover for the return fire. Also to help them out the M3 Lee oh, so he could stay here he's gonna poke his head around here and he should be able just about to make out this Panzer 3 on the end and be out of range of the five centimeter guns so we'll do that and we'll get into shooting. Okay, we're going to start off with the Lee shooting. So he has his only, this is the only guy you can see. It is open, so it's going to be hit on fours, but goes to five for stabilizers. So the main gun with the two dice needing fives, we get one, and we might as well roll for the 37 as well. And we also get a hit on the 37. So his front armor is five, this is AT10. And that goes straight through. And then for the little gun, that bounces. So we need a firepower, sorry for using the American dice, 3 plus to kill the Panzer three, And it is dead Panzer three here. Okay, the remaining Shermans are then going to open up on the remaining two Panzers. So there's going to be six dice total. And they're going to be needing fives because of stabilizers. And we only get the one hit. So we'll be opting to put it on the short barreled one. Uh, sorry, the long barreled one, and he's out of 8 inches, so he can try and mistake and target it onto the up armoured, because it'll give him a bit of a bit of a chance. Uh, he does on a 6, so that swaps to here. Uh, so that is front armour 6 against AT-10. And unfortunately, that's still a penetrating hit, so on a 3 up, that's a kill. And we get a 6. So that is another dead Panzer 3. And these guys are going to be last standing next turn. Okay, German turn 4. The only motivation we have is the last stand on this Panzer 3. Luckily, the Germans have a 3rd Reich last stand, which will be a 3+. Plus. And we get a 6, so he is happy to go. So... This Panzer III here is going to risk it again and try and do a blitz move and hopefully be able to get rid of this M3 Lee. And he gets a 2, so that puts a bit of a spanner in the work. So I'll have to have a little think now about what he's going to be doing. Uh, so what he's going to do is he's just going to do a tactical move to here. And he's probably going to get clobbered next to him by the Shermans and, well, try his luck. Meanwhile, over here, the up armor Panzer III is going to do a terrain dash to here, and then the other Panzer IVs are going to do a terrain dash. Now they actually terrain dash a little bit further, so they go in here. Now, if this brought me within eight inches of an enemy model, I won't be able to dash. But and luckily for me, it uh, is further enough away. So that is it. So now we're going to go into the shooting. So. Uh, let's go and try the 5cm guns and see if they can have some better luck. Okay, so we've had a little check and they're all in range, so that's 6 dice. Uh, it's going to be 3s normally and then 4s for range. 
and we get two hits. So we'll put that on two of the Shermans. Now the Sherman armor does go up to seven for the range, so they only need a two to equal. So first one is an equal, and then the next one is a fail. So well, this is interesting. So a four up on the guy who might be bailed, and he's bailed, and then a four up to kill. And we have a kill, so this uh, Panzer three might have a different target instead. Okay, so so far we have one bailed out Sherman, one dead, one active. Now this Panzer three here is going to fire one dice. So normally you will hit the Sherman on a three. It will be a four because it's concealment, and it'll be a five because this tank failed his blitz move. So needing a five, and we get a two unfortunately. So that's not going to be enough. And we'll have to check distances from this guy to see if they can get a reroll. Okay, so unfortunately, this tank is going to be out of the six inches uh, for the reroll uh, for the remount, but this guy will be able to benefit from the last stand, so uh, we might be able to keep in the game a little bit more. So, but first of all, we have a remount tank, and he does not get back in on a three. So now they have a last stand on a four plus rerolling. They get a two. So if they do not get this, that unit goes and that will be game to the Germans. And unfortunately, it is a three. So this guy ends up getting his tank blown up because he was bailed. And this guy drives away. So now when we check formation uh, last stand, we only have one unit left. So he will go, leaving the battlefield to the Germans. And that is it. That is a fairly uh, simple uh, battle report. Uh, try my best to explain as much. So I feel like it would be a bit easier to go through the rules in a battle setting rather than a training ground. So we will do another one like this, but we will add some objectives to play for and we'll be using the uh, Tobruk set, so British and Italians. There we go, the Africa Corps take the day. Uh, it was actually quite close in the end because that Panzer III going, all it took, all it would take then is the Panzer III HQ or the Panzer IVs to go and it would be the American victory. Um, so I hope you found that enjoyable and informative for new players. The, the rule book is there and will describe the game better than I could. I'm just trying to put in a situation. Um, I had a lot more fun than I thought I would doing this. And it lasted a lot longer than I than I thought it would, mainly because of my dice. But uh, that is the aim of the game. You have to play to the dice. And um, I did get a few things wrong, um, um, not rule-wise, but tactically-wise with the Americans. I should have moved them into short range sooner, since it wouldn't have affected what they required to hit. Um, but that is it. Um, and shoot, I always take man of the matches um, in my games. So. Um, for the Americans, uh, the M3 Lee platoon, because they did a bit of damage and they absorbed quite a lot of hits, a lot more than I thought they would, and they also took it like a champ and helped their HQ not die for a turn. Um, and then for the Germans, it's obviously the Panzer III platoon, took a lot of punishment and still survived to see the end of the game. Um, unfortunately, that Panzer III didn't do anything right at the end, and they had a few little hits here and there. And that's, that's it, that's Flames of War. So next report, we're going to be doing a mission with, uh, it's going to be a very similar setup to Annihilation, but there'll be objectives to play for. So we'll go through objectives and we'll be using the units um, and models from the Tobruk set. So that'll be Avanti Italians and Armoured Fist British. So I hope you enjoyed that. And then all existing players, um, pass this on to someone you think might be interested. This might help them, give them a little gentle push into Flames War. Now, it's, it's a really good game, really friendly community, and I suggest you try it. Um, in addition to the box set, you will need glue and clippers, and you can paint them if you want. It will look a lot better if you paint them, uh, and that is it. So, everyone, take care, and uh, hopefully, might see you at a battle table one day or be uh, telling me how much you enjoy your starter set. That's it. So, till then.